You know, it's interesting to me. Every day, we deal with listening, hearing, seeking, finding, understanding certain facts about ourselves that God reveals to us in His Word, but also certain things that the world does to us that we don't realize completely what effect it has on us. Because every morning we choose bluntly how we want to be for that day. We choose to turn on the TV and listen to the latest news. We choose to check our app you know, and find out what our schedule should be today. We choose to plan out and coordinate our decision-making process by using smartphones and smart technology in order to coordinate how we're going to spend each and every day of our life. Because after all, we want to get the most productivity. So we network our time with other people. We coordinate those plans and efforts that we have each day to accomplish the most return on our investment of time that we can get, especially if we're coordinating it according to our job, our life, our wife, our family, our friends, and even God at times. And you know, interestingly enough, in these latter days as we have planned out and we are so connected to the internet and to each other, supposedly, especially through social media, the question becomes, are we connected to God? Are we socially connected to the Almighty God who made the heavens and the earth? I guess the question would be, have you made an application for your direct relationship with Jesus? Because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me, they would not follow the voice of another. So. I understand people studying the scriptures in order to understand when they're wrong about something, but the question we have to ask ourselves in a modern technology is, are we spending the time, according to what Jesus said, doing those things that he wants us to do? You know, take off the phones, put down the iPad, the iPods, you know, put down the eyes in everything that we're doing, and seek to do his technology, his will, his creation. You see, most of what man has done always centers on I, me, myself. Me, myself, and I are the greatest gods of this world. Really, we are. Because we spend all of this time in a narcissistic society taking care of ourselves, planning for ourselves, and doing for ourselves what we want to do according to the freedom that we think we have. Do you know that the greatest freedom in the world that this country has really is complete enslavement to the American dream? You have to go out and do. You have to accomplish this, that, and the other thing. But you don't have the freedom to do what Jesus said. Because Jesus said, if you have the ability to cause yourself to grow an extra inch, if you have the ability to number the hairs on your head, if you have the ability to you know, grow another arm or grow another leg or, you know, do something like that, then, praise the Lord, that would be your capability to go out and do those things. But since you don't know what tomorrow may bring and you don't even know how to do those things, how can you plan out tomorrow? For sufficient is the day and the evil thereof, Jesus said. So we should be moving and operating according to His will, who is able to do all these things to accomplish the supernatural or what we call the things that are beyond our abilities to do so we call them supernatural as opposed to natural which for God it's natural so we seek to do those things that we know how to do as opposed to what he knows how to do and the funny thing is is that when we do that when we seek to do his will he opens our eyes to things we never knew were around us. You know, like the aura that's around plants and animals and our own physical being because our body itself is kind of like electrically built, you know, in a lot of ways and it gives off this kind of like aura or halo kind of effect around our body. If we had eyes to see, then we would be able to see those things that God can see, obviously, that God created 
obviously, that God allowed some of the rest of creation to see. Because, you see, we only have a certain amount of receptors in our eyes to see certain colors, and we can only see those colors up to a point. But we're limited in our ability to see. Funny. We only have a certain amount of receptors. Interesting. We're limited in a lot of ways. Animals can see a lot more. Some of them can see ultraviolet. That means that the spectrum that they see, whether it be from ultraviolet to subviolet, or sub whatever it may be, means that they can see a lot more colors because they have receptors that allow them the ability to see. The same thing is true about hearing. Some of the animals can hear so much better than we do. We only hear up to a point. And even that, we can deafen or we can cause damage to our hearing so that we only hear ringing in our ears. The world and its ways wants us to be deafened and be blind to a lot of things that God has made for us today. And so the world and its ways by the God of this world has caused us to create our own environment. Oh, we can see so much better now because we have our iPads to view the world. We have our applications to better understand our world. We have all these technology things to better comprehend what's going on. But I can tell you this, I was amazed the other day when I heard of a Christian on a very popular radio station tell me, or say over the radio waves, that they were so much challenged by not having their phone with them, so much challenged by not having the connections that they needed in order to be connected to God, because they had their apps for that, but also to be connected to the world and what it's doing. You know, I'm finding that, especially this week, that, you know, I come up across my own birthday of all things, you know, which I really don't like birthdays, but I'm finding that the voices that we listen to often determine the direction of our heart and the attitudes with which we were going to arrange our day, although we may have wanted to be positive. Sometimes this idea of power of positive thinking is a negative thing because we're not listening to God speak. We're listening to what we want to hear Him speak, but are we listening to what God would speak to us today? Because it's easy to pop in, boom, let's check out our favorite video. Let's check out our favorite music download. Let's put our ringtone so that we only hear what we want to hear when we want to hear it. Does that make you nervous? No, it should. Because once you've gotten deafened to the voice of God, you don't hear so well. Once you've got this ringing in your ears, and I have that from industrial damage to my ears, it's a little harder to hear things. And so when you get a certain amount of the world in your viewpoint, or enough of religious observance in what you're doing in your life, then suddenly you're not so open to being led by the Spirit of God. You see, there's this very rigid structure you've placed within your life to only do what you have programmed yourself to do. Because you're becoming a product of your own determination. You have self-willed your self-determinate structure in life so that you get to choose what you do today. That's sad. Because you see, there may come a time when a hurricane comes, a tornado, a flood, a drought, and God is saying to you, I want you to move. Get away from there. Leave. Go somewhere. Do something. But don't stand there in the midst of a drought and say, oh God, I'm dying for lack of water. Don't stand in the midst of a tornado and say, oh God, protect me because I'm being blown about and buffeted by the winds. Don't say when you see the hurricane coming, oh God, I know you'll protect me because after all, I'm a Christian. You're going to get annihilated because 
if you haven't spent the time daily to walk with God, to talk with Him, to be led by the Spirit of God, to be involved in what He is doing, then you'll never see what's coming your way, especially the day of destruction, when it visits your own things that you built your house upon, whether they be sand or whether they be stone. Because Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount that if you do these things that I've said to you, then your house will stand. But if you haven't, your house will come tumbling down. So, we as born-again Christians, led by the Spirit of God, born of the Spirit of God, and walking after not the world in its ways or the things of the flesh, but rather after the Spirit of God, we are called to hear God speak. We are being called to listen to God. We are being called and implored by Jesus, Behold, I, Jesus, stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him. I will spend time in your practical day eating and drinking with you to show you the things that are coming upon the world. Even as the book of Revelation declares that these things were given that you might know the times that we live in. And how much more so when you hear the world and everything around you trying to get your attention. God doesn't compete with you. God implores you. God calls you. Because many are called, but few are chosen. And the chosen make that determination by what they choose today to listen to. You have that choice today. You can make it religious and Christian sounding by choosing some religious way of expressing yourself to God. But the question you have to ask yourself to be chosen, are you listening to God? Are you walking with God? Are you talking with God? Are you hearing His voice as He wants you to know Him personally? Because Jesus said, Father, I don't pray that you take them out of the world. I pray that in the world they would know you as I have known you walk with you as I have walked with you, talk with you as I have talked with you, to have your ear, but also to listen as I have listened and watched you and done the things you said to do. Today, today is the day that the Lord has made. So today, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart, because it will get harder and harder to hear. But today, listen carefully, specifically, intimately, to the real cry of God's heart to you today. To just be with Him and to come spend your time, not with some pre-planned devotion even, or some pre-planned Bible study that you have. Every morning you do it regularly. Those are good, but they're part of your religious practice. You need a time to shut up, to put up with all the technologies aside, and to be quiet, and to be still, really to appreciate what God is doing, which is to meet with you. Behold, Jesus said, behold, comprehend it, take it in, and behold the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You behold it, and you are beholden to Him by holding in your heart in your mind, in your ears, in your heart, in your being, in your spirit, the very things that God would speak to you today. You behold them. You hold them in your hands. You hold them in your spirit. You hold them in your heart. Walk with God today. Talk with Him about your day. For this is the day that He's made for you. And He wants to be with you, leading you, guiding you, not working around you with all the circumstances to bring you back to him at the end of your day and say, well, you know, you could have done it the easy way, so we did it the hard way. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether it be the gods of men or the living God. 
at the end of your day today, ask yourself, did you live according to a living God who is alive and well in you, around you, about you, for you, and talking to you, and living that life that you can say, obviously, that person is serving the living God. You can tell by the way that he lives his life. He seeks to walk with God in every decision he makes. The choices he decides have been made with God according to God's will and not his own. We have that ability to choose this day, every day, whom we will serve. You get to choose. Who will you serve?